So I received some questions and uh, I'll answer these. We have a, a talk this Sunday, 8.30 p.m., October 13th. So the link is in the description box and it is free and available for everyone who is interested. So first question is, do your thoughts ever completely stop, like becoming completely presence or awareness or are your thoughts always there? You and you are just not identified with them. Or do thoughts just subside a bit and you don't think as much? So you see, all of these things happen. Sometimes there is just complete cessation of thoughts and it's just the pure presence. And sometimes there are th thoughts going on in the background, but there is not much identification with them. As in the thought process would keep happening, but irrespective of what thoughts arise, there is no emotional charge associated with those thoughts. And even if the emotional charge arises for some reason, it just naturally, organically subsides back and, uh, and it, it just, there is complete detachment from the process of thinking. So all of these things happen and all of these things are accepted and there is no attempt by me to change anything. So even if the emotional charge arises, which is actually not separate from the thought. So we may feel that emotion is different, thought is different, but it is actually continuation of the same movement. So emotional charge arises sometimes and it subsides sometimes. And when the emotional charge is high, we feel the sense of separate self, which says, I am thinking. But when the emotional charge is not there and simply the thought is arising and playing, there is no association actually with what the thought is bringing up. And the second question is, would you say that past does not exist? Only a thought <clears throat> within the current experience, within eternity. That is very liberating to realize through experience that past and future are not real and all <clears throat> that ever occurs is this. You see, to know movement, there has to be a substratum. Now past and future are a movement in time. Therefore to know past, that means to know movement, or let's say an imaginary future, to know that movement, one has to be at a different frame of reference, conceptually speaking. Just like <clears throat> when you are at the train station, you have to be at the platform to see the train moving. When you are inside the train, you conceptually know that it's moving, but you cannot see the train moving when you are inside of it. So when you are at the platform and still, you can see the train moving. Similarly, when you are at that place of peace, which is referred to here as this, this means whatever is arising, one sees everything as a movement but there is a constancy. There is, a, there is an awareness which remains unaffected and completely detached from the content that is being produced. And yet, it is not separate from that content. 
there is a quote by Nisargadatta Maharaj. I'm going to read his words. He says, I am timeless being. I am free of desire and fear because I do not remember the past or imagine the future. Maharaj says, I am now. And I will read another of its quote, which says, Be empty of all mental content, of all imagination and effort, and the very absence of obstacles will cause reality to rush in. So when there is no resistance to thinking or thought, then it is but natural that all thinking at some point will subside into the ocean of peaceful awareness because that is where it rises from. And that is what Maharaj here is saying that the reality will just rush in. That means you will discover your own nature as peace. It is only when we try to change things. And why do we change things? Because we are identified with an imagination. So when we are identified with an imaginary future, which can be based out of fear or desire, then in order to, in order to be peaceful, we try to conform or try to control or change the content of our consciousness. So, so that things align with that, with that idea of a future imagination. However, the more we try to do that, the more pain we experience, the more suffering we experience, the more emotional charge we experience. So when we give up effort, the effort is always because of the movement which is either past or future. So when we give up the effort, that means when we don't put resistance to anything, then we discover our true nature as peace, which Maharaj calls as the reality. <laughs>